Hello guys, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to 21st Century IS Academy Online Indian Economic Classes. We are in the chapter of Taxation and Fiscal System. As part of this chapter, already we have finished some of the issues very successfully. And I think uh, we have already seen yesterday some of the crucial aspects of this chapter, the budget part, especially the components of the budget where I have already explained you that non-plan and plan this distinction has already been ruled out and now there is only two types of uh, you know the things that we need to consider that is revenue and the capital under the revenue we have the revenue receipts and the revenue expenditure and when it comes to the capital we have the capital receipts and the capital expenditure and I also showed you the reasons you know why it actually happened uh, uh, but today we are going to discuss it well if you know completely so that is where actually we have to start so this is where the government switched over from plan to non plan expend uh, plan and non plan classification to revenue and capital since the budget 2017-18 and now the question is why so i already told you in the 2011 the c rangarajan the prime minister's economic advisory council chairman he recommended that the plan on non-plan expenditure is actually putting so much of pressure on the government as we are giving more and more importance to the plan expenditure but when it comes to the revenue expenditure we are not giving enough importance to that because I had already given you some of the arguments which I you know explained you in the last class that the maintenance of any assets is as well important when it comes to uh, you know the budget it is not only the construction which is so important the maintenance of the assets that is also important and that comes under the revenue expenditure part that is consumption part and output and outcome budgeting as i told you that i will explain in the you know coming classes so this is where we have stopped in the last class so if you look at the budget 2021 at a glance and obviously we are in a big you know problematic situation of covid 19 and if you look at so these are the actual numbers of the revenue receipts and capital receipts and the total revenue receipts that is you know the estimated value is around uh, 20 lakh crore and the capital receipts is around 10 lakh crore and the total receipts is around 30 lakh crore so from the revenue account and capital account and the total expenditure is this and there is some revenue deficit and fiscal deficit also so there we have to understand first of all what are these deficits point of view and remember when it comes to the economy in the UPSC UPSC will never ever ask you questions on numbers okay like what is the total number of the revenue receipts what is the total number of the capital receipts what is the total number of the fiscal deficit they won't ask you anything but they may ask you the things like revenue deficit fiscal deficit and primary deficit in terms of the percentages percentages as part of GDP especially when it comes to the fiscal deficit fiscal deficit means it is the total borrowings of the government within a particular financial year so that is where UPSC may ask you like how much percentage or else maybe in the mains question you may get a situation of writing the answer of how much fiscal deficit in the current year or in the previous year in terms of the percentage of GDP so that is what we have to remember all the time so apart from this uh, you know we will come to this part again uh, later there are some things which I have to explain you that is called tax by ONC so these are all some miscellaneous uh, you know topics in this chapter so what exactly meant by tax by ONC so tax by ONC it's a ratio of the percentage of change in tax revenues so tax by ONC actually says if for example if there is a change in GDP change in GDP in the sense here positive change I am talking about if the GDP is increasing then how much the percentage change in the tax revenue and how much tax is also increasing for example if there is an increase in 10% of GDP the tax revenue is it increasing by 10% or not so this is what tax by ONC is all about so to calculate the tax by ONC as I told you you know uh, on the slide itself so what is the change in tax rate and what is the base accordingly we calculate the percentage change in the tax revenue it's a very simple thing so tax by ONC it's it's a very very simple thing that there is a change in GDP like GDP is increasing GDP is increasing by 10% so whether the tax that is coming to the government is it increasing by the same 10% or not 
if it is more it is even good for example the gdp is increasing by 10 percent and if the tax is also increased by 12 percent that is even more good to the country so that is how actually we see how the country is actually responding to the increase in gdp so tax by ONC is also one of the important concepts when it comes to the economic growth and development in the country apart from that there is you know one more thing that is called as tax elasticity so tax elasticity and tax by ONC they are uh, you know one of the uh, what you call uh, you know twin issues which may be asked in the UPSC examination as far as the prelims is concerned in general right so let us see here tax elasticity in the same way that we have seen the tax by ONC so I will differentiate this tax by ONC and tax elasticity so that you will understand this better so in the tax by ONC what I told you increase in GDP or national income how much change we are seeing in the tax revenue tax elasticity in the sense for example percentage of change in tax revenue when the government increases the tax rate and for example let's say the tax rate is 10 percent now from 10 percent to it has been increased to 15 percent so what is the change in tax revenue from 15 percent it is increased by 20 percent now what is the change in tax revenue so this is called tax elasticity there are the two important indicators that is tax by ONC and the tax elasticity that are two important uh, you know indicators that are used to estimate the changes in the tax revenue with changes in the G you know GDP of the country so elastic system as I told you it means it has been defined in a more uh, elaborative manner here an elastic system means that government would be able to meet its expenditure needs over time as its GDP grows which means if the GDP is increasing if the tax revenue to the government is also increasing which means what government can spend more money that is called expenditure will also increase so that is the same point which I read just now so if a system is buoyant but not elastic it means we need to adjust the tax system and anti the GDP is increasing the percentage of the tax revenue that is coming to the government is also increasing but the moment the tax is increasing the tax rate is increased the tax revenue is not increasing which means what an economy is by end and a GDP is increasing and the tax revenue is increasing but not elastic and uh, if you are increasing the total number of the tax then the people they are not ready to pay it right so that is not elastic so question if a system is by end but not elastic means we need to adjust the tax system which means we have to collect less taxes or else the tax should be less so these are the characteristics of the taxation system which is actually used in forecasting the future revenues and how much the government is able to collect in 2021 by depending on the tax by ONC and tax elasticity only we actually come to such type of estimates in any economy especially in the Indian economy and to explain this there is one more thing that is called as laughter curve actually tax elasticity and laughter curve both are same so this is only a graphical representation so here if you see the tax revenue and how much tax revenue is increasing on the x-axis you can see tax rate you can take here zero percent tax rate so when there is a zero percentage of tax rate then the government cannot collect more taxes if the tax rate increased by 10 percent then the total tax revenue will also increase if the tax uh, rate increases by 20 percent then the, again the tax increases the total revenue if the tax rate is 30 percent then the government is getting the maximum tax but after 30 percent if you are increasing to 40 percent then the total tax collection would reduce and t the moment you keep on increasing the tax rates first 10 percent then 20 percent then 30 percent people will pay taxes and the tax revenue to the government will also increase but beyond one point one benchmark point if still the tax rate is increasing then the people will not pay taxes and the government will also get more taxes sometimes you can say people will try to evade the taxes this we call it as tax evasion pannu egaveta in telugu so 
beyond 30 percent if you are increasing the taxes instead of getting more revenue the graphs won't go like this but it will come down so if you make the tax 50 percent again it will come down if you make the tax 100 percent no one will pay the taxes for example if the government say if you are earning thousand rupees per day as salary this total thousand rupees must be given to the government in terms of tax then why you work you never work then the total collection of the taxes to the government would be zero. Then 0% zero of tax or 100% of tax, there is no difference. The total revenue would be zero itself. So this is called laughter curve or else laugher curve. So this may be asked in the examination once upon a time in UPSC. UPSC used to give this graph diagram and it used to ask this graph represents of what? Laughter curve or some, you know, uh, you know some other curves they will give you uh, some a b c d options that is where you have to choose the correct option right so the next part is budget deficit but before we go into the budget deficit let us understand some of the other concepts here which i left to you government actually under the gst now it collects some cess so there is actually a difference between cess and surcharge so these are two independent issues which are not connected to any of the previous classes. Cess surcharge, what is the difference? Surcharge means it is an extra tax, tax on tax. Cess is also nothing but an extra tax. But what is the difference? For example, if you are getting a power bill, you got a power bill of 1000 rupees. Sometimes they say surcharge is 10% and extra you have to pay 100 rupees. So this surcharge, it is an extra tax on tax. This will directly go to the central government and this surcharge can be used for any purpose. Right? It can be used for any purpose, any purpose. So if you are collecting the surcharge from electricity bill, you can use the total amount of the surcharge to education sector. It is up to the government. But CES is different. For example, if you are saying on each and every transaction, the government is applying education cess of 1%. Whatever the amount that the government is collecting under the education cess should only be used or must only be used for education purpose only, which means cess refers to it is for specific purpose. It is a tax on tax, but for only specific purpose and a, with what intention that you are collecting cess you must use that to whole money for that intention and for that purpose only. But when it comes to the surcharge, you can use the money for any purpose that is called surcharge. So we have different differences like Krishi Kalyan says, Swachh Bharat says, Clean Energy says, says on tea, sugar and jute. Currently there are six cesses continue to be levied under the central government because cess and surcharge they are the prerogatives of the central government itself. One is primary education says, secondary education says, says on crude oil and petrol, road says, and NCCD on tobacco and tobacco products. So these are all the simple things, right? So this is what you have to remember. Just remember these names, these four and these five. Now you don't need to remember actually these because they are already subsumed under the GST. Whenever you are paying some tax because you are buying a good, that MRP includes the cess of these items also. But exclusively, explicitly, the government is collecting these cesses also. So that is what we have to remember as far as the examination is concerned. And I think there is one more thing that is education just on imported goods. Of course, it comes here also. So as I told you, these are the definitions. Cess is imported by the central government for a specific purpose. Example, primary education, higher education. Cess is only spent for the purpose it collected, not for any other. Surcharge means it can be used for any purpose. So these are the things which I told you and this you must write in your notes. Right? So the next part I already explained to you, tax buoyancy, tax elasticity and the laughter curve. So next part is budget deficit. So budget deficit, again, it is categorized into revenue deficit, fiscal deficit, primary deficit, monetized deficit. 
first one on one let me take each and every deficit first one is revenue deficit so before we explore this uh, revenue deficit first of all we have to understand this word called deficit so why actually first of all what is this deficit so deficit means anything which is in shortage we call it as deficit for example i have 100 rupees in my pocket but if i want to buy an item which is worth of 120 rupees so i have a deficit of 20 rupees right so that is called deficit so likewise government also get some money we call it as receipts or revenue revenue receipts or else you can call it as income at the same time government spend some money so we call it as expenditure so expenditure minus income if there is any value which is in shortage we call it as deficit like the earlier example here revenue deficit means it's a very simple thing earlier we have seen the budget diagram in that there is something called as revenue expenditure we have seen 70 percent of the budget in india is revenue expenditure only and we spend lots of lots of crores of money for different different areas like pensions salaries subsidies government expenses administrative expenses police expenses social sector schemes etc so on and so forth so revenue expenditure minus at the same time revenue receipts so this if there is any shortage and if the expenditure is greater than the receipts then we call it as revenue deficit so revenue deficit means this if the revenue expenditure is greater than the revenue receipts then we call it as revenue deficit remember all the time for any country this is not only for india this is a benchmark quotation for any country the revenue deficit it must be zero or it must be in surplus of course if it is in surplus no one will uh, you know agree to it because always we have one type or another type of spending especially when it comes to the government savings is actually not applicable to the government there is not even a single country in this world which actually saves more money than it spends because savings is more related to individuals it's a word worth mentioning for individuals but not for the governments because government you know always it find one route or another route for the expenditure for spending because government is there to spend so all the time the revenue deficit it must be zero or else it must be in surplus it should not be in negative but unfortunately in india every time it is in negative lines which is unacceptable and which is unnecessarily because it puts so much so much of pressure on the government and as well as the economy of course we found many routes to stop this revenue expenditure going into negative balance some of these paths they gave the success some of them they were failures but now ultimately the conclusion is in india the revenue expenditure is still higher than the revenue receipts but that particular revenue deficit it's not huge it is under our control so that is one positive as you know aspect that we can talk about so this is revenue de receipt deficit the second part is fiscal deficit so what exactly meant by fiscal deficit i told you revenue deficit means revenue expenditure minus revenue receipts here fiscal deficit means the total expenditure of the government the total expenditure which means what revenue expenditure and capital expenditure minus total income of the government and the revenue receipts and the capital receipts this is called fiscal deficit so this is what exactly every time i told you for example this year the total expenditure of the government is around 30 lakh crore but whereas the total income is around close to i am not sure of exact statistics but if you take it is around 25 lakh crore the rest of this 5 lakh crore government borrow it either borrow from rbi or from the market or from different different channels so that is called fiscal deficit and a deficit 
here in this way you can talk about because fiscal deficit there are many definitions given in the books some of you people you may get confused by reading those definitions that's why i'll give you one easy definition the total borrowings of the government the total borrowings of the government in a particular year or in a fiscal year that is called as fiscal deficit when a government total expenditure exceeds revenue that it generates excluding the money from borrowings this actually you may not understand i will tell you what is that let us see here you see this is called capital receipts here the government is also borrowing right short term borrowings market loans so fiscal deficit means this one and the other borrowings that the government can bring so general gaiti with these as tamana so children this is also borrowing and for example you see revenue receipts 10 capital receipts 5 expenditure total 20 right so what is the fiscal deficit today 20 minus 15 that is 5 so this is the fiscal deficit this is how exactly it goes minus 5 so in this 5 already we have borrowed so we have to remove this for example if this value is 2 so minus 5 plus 2 then minus 3 that is the fiscal deficit so that is why there it said like minus borrowings and the capital borrowings are matter right see that is what excluding money from borrowings so that is capital receipts so deficits differ from debt which is an accumulation of yearly deficits so fd fiscal deficit is equal to overall this is how you have to remember budget expenditure minus budget receipts got it next one so this is how the fiscal deficit in india as a percentage of gdp is changing all over the time from 2008 to 2017 because i have taken this from earlier survey if you see here this is center states gross just focus on the center one you see this is the trend right six percent and then increase and then decrease and then increase and then decrease 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 but now it will increase again so in upsc they will ask you this trend in the past 10 years the fiscal deficit has been decreasing or increasing so likewise they will ask you so if you want to answer that question you have to know that trend of this fiscal deficit not only fiscal deficit any deficit upsc in the prelims examination they'll ask you in this way what is the trend see that's why here it has been written so mir exam kelle mundu kuda ide raskovali fiscal deficit 2008 to 2020 something like this so there is no trend if it is continuously decreasing you have to write like this so it is continuously decreasing or if it is continuously increasing you have to write this continuously increasing so that is how upsc will ask you remember this trend analysis we call it as so that trend analysis is very 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 important okay right next one is called monetized deficit so monetized deficit is a concept uh, you know followed by the government it is nothing but the borrowings made from the rbi through printing the fresh currency for example let's say 2020 the government is in the need of 5 lakh crore and for example deficit and matter so government has a deficit of 5 lakh crore let's say for example now what the government will do it will straight away go to the rbi and it will ask the rbi to print the fresh currency and then that fresh currency is printed by the rbi and it will be delivered to the government the government will use it so this is a method we followed till 2006 but in 2006 this method was discontinued why because if the government is keep on borrowing this fresh currency or currency through printing the fresh you know uh, notes 
this will increase the money supply in the economy so that is what i have said the money supply in the economy by an equal am amount equivalent amount it will be increased once it happens there will be a huge scope for the inflation and not only that for example let's say 2020 you know four is the election year so what the government will do in the 2024 it will spend lots of lots of lots of money and then by the time it comes 2005 it will try to influence by giving so much of money to the people so to come back to the power it will simply uh, put the economy in the ruins or if that government is lose lost the election then the next next government will face this you know problem and it will have to pay the price so this is called monetized deficit so earlier actually these type of concepts were there not only monetized deficit some concepts like deficit financing and they were there actually right so we discontinued all those things for example before this monetized deficit there was one concept called deficit financing that is if there is a gap between the government receipts and expenditure again the rbi will give the currency directly by printing the new one but of course there is a you know difference between the monetized deficit and deficit financing in the deficit financing at least uh, the government first it will borrow from the market when it is unable to borrow the borrow from the market then it will use the monetized deficit concept but deficit financing is not like that straight away the budget deficit is completely monetized through the deficit financing and for example in the monetized deficit first the government will try to raise the money from the market if it fails then it will go to the rbi but in the deficit financing straight away the government will go to the rbi and it will ask for the fresh currency so this deficit financing concept was dropped in 1977 because we thought that if we allow this type of full indulgence of spending money without any accountability or borrowing the money without accountability that is going to burden the future government and that is going to burden the people also so we have removed all this concept and we have brought one more concept in its place that is called ways and means advances so in the ways and means advances how this will happen i will explain in the next slides so if you look at this so to make it more concrete i have brought these deficits at one place this is the monetized deficit directly that is where the government will get financed through the printing of notes and fiscal deficit i already told you revenue deficit per plus capital expenditure the excess of expenditure over revenue receipts and non-debt capital receipts it represented i told you we have to subtract the debt capital from it so already i showed it in the earlier you know slides here there is one more thing called primary deficit so last time i showed you here in the budget diagram itself i showed you you know something if you can remember this so here i showed you something called as interest payments what is meant by interest payments for the earlier loans that are raised by the government now currently you have to pay the interest so in the primary deficit we have to remove or we have to subtract this interest so that is called primary deficit you see here primary deficit means what fiscal deficit minus interest payments why because how much actually we are raising that is more important fiscal deficit of course here what is happening earlier i told you government is spending 30 lakh crore it is getting only 25 lakh crore so deficit is minus 5 lakh crore right so this deficit means what in this deficit and if, for example if the government is raising 5 lakh crore if it is spending which means what it is also paying the interest rates for the earlier loans and take other now if you are raising 5 lakh crore in this 5 lakh crore you are giving some amount as interest payments for the previous loans so if you remove that interest from the previous loans then you will get the primary deficit so if you compare the primary deficit and fiscal deficit primary deficit is more relevant so fiscal deficit it will only show you how much the government is borrowing but when it comes to the primary deficit the primary deficit will tell you how much actually you are borrowing for this year without paying the interest payments for the previous year loans right so that is called primary deficit so monetized deficit i have already explained you so apart from this ways and means advances what is the current trend or the position with the government when it comes to taking the loans so this i will explain in the next class 
so thank you this is the end of today's class if there are any questions regarding of this you are free to message me thank you